Yami Yugi, the king of games, has played some amazing cards throughout the entirety of his time in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. His deck was that of strategy, where he would often combine flexible strategies that were very situation specific. Plot armor and main protag, so obviously. Throughout his slightly changing decks, Yami Yugi would often play spellcasters and fiend type monsters, and it's monsters specifically that we will be looking at today. Now, this list is in no particular order and is my opinion on his best monsters. Anyway, with that being said, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. Okay, so kicking off this list with the very obvious, his staple, the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense, the Dark Magician. This card really is the first monster you think of when Yami Yugi is concerned, and it has been an ever faithful servant to him. Not just in its 2500 attack and 2100 defense, but also in the many combinations with countless spells and traps that dwell in Yugi's deck. It is a level 7 dark attribute spellcaster that has often gone on to fuse with other monsters to make an even more powerful foe for Yugi's opponent, such as Dark Sage, Dark Magician the Dragon Knight, and possibly a couple of others that may have made this list. A true classic of the entire game of Dual Monsters, very popular and one that even today still gains extra support. A nod particularly to the Duelist Kingdom era is Summon Skull. This guy was an absolute beast rocking that 2500 attack for a level 6 monster. Of course, back in those Duelist Kingdom days, Yugi could just drop this huge hitter no problem. But giving a further nod to those early 2000s version of the trading card game, I loved being able to sack off a monster to drop this Dark Fiend onto the field. It just looks awesome and was my favorite card for quite a while. Let's not forget, obviously, in that duel with the Paradox Brothers, when Yugi fused Summon Skull with Joey's Red Eyes Black Dragon to form Black Skull Dragon. I mean, freaking awesome. I also remember Summon Skull being part of that Electricity Powers Up the Magnet Warriors classic Yu-Gi-Oh rule bending for the anime. So awesome. Dark Paladin, damn, what a card and definitely one of Yuki's best. Fusing his Dark Magician with Buster Blader, he was able to summon this ultimate magical swordsman to the field, most famously against Kaiba in the Battle City semi-finals. It had an incredible 2900 attack and 2400 defense with the added effect of Buster Blader in which Dark Paladin gains an extra 500 points of attack for each dragon monster on the field or graveyard. It also came with its own effect in which you can discard one card from your hand to negate the activation and destroy a spell card as long as Dark Paladin was face up on the field. Everything about this card was just so awesome to me, apart from its battle cry. That really sucked. Sticking with another spellcaster and a ritual monster this time. The Magician of Black Chaos was the card that gave Yugi victory over the madman that is Maximilian Pegasus back in Duelist Kingdom. I freaking love this card, it looks amazing and certainly has the stats to back it up. With 2800 attack and 2600 defense. This card also has a very epic attack name in Chaos Scepter Blast noise. It just sounded so epic when Dan Green would project that during a duel involving this spellcaster. But anything Dan Green says, to be fair. Sadly, I think it only made two appearances, the previously mentioned Pegasus duel and I believe against Noah in the Virtual World arc. Still, it is more than deserving of a place on this list. Exodia the Forbidden One, only used in that very first duel because Weevil under buttface threw the cards off the boat on the way to Duelist Kingdom, had, had to be on this list. Though, come to think of it, since it was just randomly in there for plot, I think it would have just clogged up his deck in Duelist Kingdom as, you know, he really had no strategy. But still, amazing. I mean, Yugi's deck was pretty awesome as it was, but to have this instant win condition in there as well, damn. As Kaiba said, Exodia, it's not possible. No one has ever been able to summon him. Except for that one kid who was lucky enough to have pulled it from the Legend of Blue Eyes set back in the day and would constantly top deck it like a total douche. 
but I digress. Exodia is amazing, a true classic in the Yu-Gi-Oh world and has to be on this list. Because of how epic it is and how epic the moment was when Yugi used it. Exodia, obliterate! Of course, Exodia has its flaws and we saw this in the Battle City arc when Yugi had to go up against it, but still, it's Exodia, man. The Egyptian God Cards, the most powerful and feared creatures in the game of Duel Monsters. Now, as we know, Yugi managed to obtain all three. The Winged Dragon of Ra, Obelisk the Tormentor, and of course, his first, Slifer the Sky Dragon. Each of these level 10 divine monsters were some of the hardest to summon in the game, but each came with overwhelming power to make up for it. Slifer's power was determined by the number of cards the duelist held and had the second mouth ability. Obelisk boasted a huge 4,000 attack and defense and would be literally invincible by tributing two other monsters on the field. And then the Winged Dragon of Ra would gain its power from the sacrifices used to summon it to the field or by life points that you would give up to give this god power. After speaking the ancient Egyptian text on the card, of course. And it comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. It's just so cool. Another nod to the ever so classic Battle City era was the introduction of the Magnet Warriors, most specifically for this list, Valkyrian the Magna Warrior. This guy boasted a huge 3500 attack and 3850 defense. Random. It could only be summoned by tributing Alpha, Beta, and Gamma the Magnet Warriors. However, you could also do the reverse to summon your Magnet Warriors back to the field to destroy the God Cards. Obviously. Just as Kaiba had the XYZ Union Monsters, this was Yugi's alternative, and what a beast of a card to be able to use off the back of them. Well, rock, I guess. I would have loved to have seen more of Valkyrion, but it was just an absolute nightmare to try and summon, especially in character deck duels. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but my, my god. My god, the payoff, though. The payoff! Next up is Amulet Dragon from Waking the Dragons. Waking the Dragons gifted Yugi, Kaiba, and Joey each their own legendary dragon card, and in Yugi's case, it was the legendary Eye of Tamias. Fusing his Dark Magician with the Eye of Tamias, Yugi held one hell of a card. This thing had 2900 attack, and its effect allowed its user to target any number of spells in all graveyards, then banish them. For each spell card banished, Amulet Dragon gained an extra 100 points of attack. As well as this, if this card was somehow destroyed, you can target one spellcaster monster from your graveyard and special summon it, which will more than likely be that Dark Magician. Now, Amulet Dragon only made that one appearance in the second duel against Raphael. And yeah, its time on the show was very limited, but nonetheless, we can't argue that this is one of the best of Yugi's monsters. Would this video even be valid if we didn't mention the greatest fap piece in all of the franchise? The Dark Magician Girl. And let me just say, noise! For many of us, this was our first waifu crush, besides Misty from Pokemon, but let's face it, Dark Magician Girl is, was, and always is better. That made sense, right? Dark Magician Girl is the apprentice of the Dark Magician. She is a level 6 dark spellcaster with 2000 attack and 1700 defense. Her effect allows her to gain 300 extra attack points for every Dark Magician or Magician of Black Chaos in either player's graveyard. Now, it's worth mentioning as a bit of fun trivia that the TCG Magician of Black Chaos wasn't released for four months after Dark Magician Girl, so her effect was not so awesome, but you know, let's face it, no one wanted this card for the effect. They wanted the OCG version for its better artwork. Now, Dark Magician Girl on her own doesn't really boast much in terms of strength, but shines just as Dark Magician when combined with the many spells and traps in Yugi's deck. And let's not forget that Dark Magician Girl was involved in some pretty pivotal moments in some of Yugi's duels. Then we have Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight, the whole backstory where she was one of the Pharaoh's childhood friends, and like mentioned, I could not mention her in this video. Because fap. I said no particular order, but I have saved the best for last. This card is by far the strongest, most powerful and feared card in the entire game. And that is what upon the destroyer. I jest, obviously. Final entry is actually a card that we didn't actually see Yugi play. Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. 
Now, we obviously saw Yugi play Blackluster Soldier, and man, was was that an awesome monster. However, this one, much better. It was seen in the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, when Yugi's deck was on tour. We then saw it in a duel, when that Yugi wannabe stole it, and Jaden, being an even bigger Yugi fanboy, dueled him to get it back. Like mentioned, of course, better. I picked this guy over the normal Blackluster Soldier because... Wow. It packs the same 3,000 attack and 2,500 defense as the original, but instead of being a ritual monster, it is an effect monster with an impressive, or impressive, effects. Once during each of your turns, you can select and activate one of the following effects. Remove from play one monster on the field. If you activate this effect, this card cannot attack. Or, if this card destroys your opponent's monster as a result of battle, it can then attack again. Very, very, very impressive card, especially especially back then. Thanks for watching. This was my video, Yami Yugi's Best Monsters. Let me know in the comments who you thought Yugi's Best Monster was and what duelist I should do a video like this for next. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Come hang out with me on Twitch and Discord during the week. The link is in the description. And of course, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Till next time, my fellow duelists. Peace!